You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast by Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom, Dr. Frederick J. Long, Dr. Mario Melendez, Dr. Jennifer Noonan, and J. M. Smith. Welcome and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Proof Text. I'm Michael Halcom. And in this episode, we are thinking about the fallacy of the week. So this is an interesting one because a friend sent me this. Uh, I think just today, actually. And this comes up around this time every year. So uh, it's the issue of Christians and Halloween or Christians celebrating Halloween. And this is something I actually wrote a blog post on way back in the days when I had a blog. I think in like 2007 or something like that. And it's kind of been an annual tradition for me to reshare that post that I wrote over a decade ago. So I'll talk a little bit about that, but what I want to do, because we often are looking at a meme or a picture or a social media post or something like that in these Fallacy of the Week episodes, is just show you the one that was sent to me. Uh, Maybe you've seen this floating around too. So let me pull it up on the screen here. If you're watching, you'll have a little bit of an advantage, but if you're listening, I'll read out what's on here as well. So here it is. It's a big uh, creepy picture. Well, the kids are kind of like in their Halloween costumes. And up at the top, it says, what Halloween teaches kids. And that's all spelled out in bone letters. Um, And then it's going to give us, I think, eight different things here. This is from a group, I guess, called truthignited.com. Never heard of them. But uh, we won't promote them here. Let's just look at what they're saying. So one of the, well, the first thing they say is, that Halloween teaches kids that it's okay to do evil things if it's, quote, at church, end quote. <laughs> oh, that's just funny to me. Um, it's, it's okay to do evil things if it's at church. Um, <laughs> that's almost like hard to respond to as a fallacy just because it's so ridiculous. Uh, but that's all right. We'll we'll come back and we'll just look at each of these in turn. So let's roll through the list now. The second thing that it lists, what Halloween teaches kids is that witchcraft and idolatry can be, quote, fun, unquote. <laughs> the third thing it teaches this, that popular culture is superior to God's laws. All right. Number four, if other Christians do it, It must be okay in all caps. Uh, You can rebrand evil, number five, and make it, quote, good, end quote. Um, Number six, quote, fitting in, end quote, is uh, more important than holiness, is something that this teaches. And number seven, obeying God's word is not very important. And number nine, if it doesn't, quote, look evil, End quote. It must not be, quote, that bad. End quote. I hate saying, quote, end quote all the time, but um, that's for the people who are listening and not watching and can see that themselves. So let's just walk back through some of this. And then I want to share a little bit of that uh, blog post that I was mentioning a little bit ago at the, the top of the episode. So let's just think about this. That Halloween teaches kids that, number one, it's okay to do evil things if it's at church. Um, is this uh, logically fallacious uh, is, or not? I, just reading it, I think so, obviously. I mean, I'm laughing about it. But what is the fallacy at work here? Uh, I think one of the fallacies that we can easily pinpoint is that this is the fallacy of an overstatement. Right, stating, um, overstating one's case. Are we really teaching kids that it's okay to do evil things, first of all? And two, that we're teaching kids that it's okay to do evil things if it's at church. Um, I think, again, this is a classic overstatement. I don't think anyone is teaching kids that it's okay to do evil things. Um, and two, much less if it's at church. So I think that's just simply the the fallacy of overstatement. There may be other fallacies hidden in there, but that's one of them. 
Um, and by the way, I mean, a lot of times stuff doesn't happen at church, uh, like when kids go out trick or treating or um, things like that. Sometimes it does. People do have uh, trunk or treats and that sort of thing. But I fail to see how that's evil. Handing out candy to kids uh, is evil and teaching kids that it's okay to do evil things. It actually seems the, the opposite. That's quite a kind thing. You're giving kids gifts. So, yeah, I think this is just your basic fallacy of overstatement going on here. The, the second one is that it teaches, uh, Halloween teaches kids that witchcraft and idolatry can be fun. Again, I, I think this is just a misrepresentation and overstatement. I wouldn't say Halloween teaches kids that witchcraft and idolatry can be fun. I would say that witchcraft teaches kids that witchcraft can be fun, perhaps. I don't know if they teach that it can be fun. And um, idolaters maybe teach that idolatry can be fun. But uh, last I checked, uh, Halloween wasn't teaching kids anything, but... Um, much less, like people who are celebrating Halloween weren't teaching them that witchcraft and idolatry can be fun. I've never, ever been to a truck or treat or a church event where people are dressed up and celebrating and uh, at some point or another are also teaching that witchcraft and idolatry can be fun. So this is also, I think, just a statement of ignorance um, or a statement from ignorance, that sort of fallacy. The the third thing is popular culture is superior to God's laws. I'll, I'll mention um, when we get to that blog piece that, in fact, uh, Halloween for much of church history has actually been celebrated as a Christian holiday. There's this old myth that it was started as a pagan holiday, but that's just what it is. It's a myth. So... Um, when we trace it back to its religious roots, we actually see a Christian foundation here. So in that case, like if you look back in church history, it wasn't teaching that it was superior to God's laws. In fact, it was teaching things about the nature and character of God. So uh, Halloween teaches kids that pop culture is superior to God's laws. Again, I've never heard that taught. I've never seen that taught. Um the the fourth thing is if other Christians do it, it must be okay. This seems just like a very gross generalization to me. Um, if other Christians do it, it must be okay. Um, now, there could be the case where that's actually a good thing, right? That um, <laughs> when Christians are doing one thing and they're teaching other people to do it, that, that it's okay. But... Uh, in this instance, they're attempting to say, of course, that it's wrong, or that Christians are teaching something uh, wrong, and therefore it's okay. So I don't know what fallacy to stick on this one. Uh, maybe a sort of false analogy fallacy. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but I personally have never encountered this, that if other Christians do it, it must be okay, at least not with regard to Halloween. Um, you can rebrand evil and make it good. So I guess my question here is, uh, what is evil about it? Um, again, when we look at the Christian origins of it, we see precisely the opposite, that it wasn't teaching anything evil. Now, there may be a sense, right, uh, in, which, in, in which modern culture has made Halloween devolve into things that can have the appearance of evil or even be evil. Um, but that's not Christians rebranding it as evil. That's evil people doing evil things and rebranding it as evil. Evil people hijacking a patently Christian and patently religious holiday. So they have the um, uh, tables flipped here, and that's a problem. So this is sort of a a fallacy of historical ignorance, at least that's what this is. This sort of claim is growing out of. It teaches kids that fitting in is more important than holiness. Um, I think there's a false comparison going on here um, with just fitting in and holiness. Like the opposites of holiness 
isn't fitting in. The opposite of holiness is unholiness. And the opposite of fitting in isn't holiness, right? Um, it's not fitting in. So the the fallacy here is that it's comparing to dissimilar things. And so the analogy or the statement doesn't even work. Um, the seventh one is that obeying God's word is not very important. Uh, I don't understand how this is the case. Um, maybe they're tying it back to you can rebrand evil and make it good. But what about Halloween is disobedience of God's word? This is There's a fallacy of vagueness going on here because they're not spelling out what they mean by that. How is this disobedient to God's word? I think a lot of people might say, oh, it's celebrating death. But let's push the pause button for a moment and remember that essentially the entirety of Christianity is a big celebration of death. Like the death of Christ, of course, paired with his resurrection. But when Christians wear a cross, <laughs> they're wearing a symbol of death around their necks. When they put crosses in their sanctuaries and out front of their church uh, buildings, it's a remembrance and celebration of death. When we partake of communion and when we engage in baptism, we're engaging in, in rituals that commemorate and celebrate death to a large degree. So I, I don't know what they mean. It's too vague when they just say obeying God's word is not very important. I have no idea how Halloween teaches that. Um, and then finally, if it doesn't look evil, it must not be that bad. Now, this is a contradiction of point number five, where they said you can rebrand evil and make it good. So um, is it evil? Does it have the appearance of evil? If they've rebranded it to look good, then how do we know that it's evil, right? So if it doesn't look evil, it must not be that bad. But at the core, at the heart I, of all this, I, I don't think that's true. Um, if it if it doesn't look evil, it must not be that bad. I don't know a Christian who would agree with that statement, at least a serious Christian. Um, the Most Christians I know would be inclined to take evil very seriously and things that have the appearance of evil very serious. So I think all of these eight points um, are sort of just uh, off. They're, they're loaded with fallacies and, and uh, bad logic and I see a lot of overstatement at work here. Um, and I guess we could probably identify several of these as well as sort of straw man arguments. So remember, I've talked about this before. That's where you you create the argument and uh, you set up the argument and then you knock it down, uh, which makes you the hero in the process. And so it makes you look good. That's really what, and to some degree, I think all eight of these points are doing. Uh, they're setting up straw man, straw man arguments and then knocking them down to make themselves look good. So I think this is just silly. I think it's spiritually immature. And um, I think we really need to be aware of these types of things. Let me go ahead and just hop over to that blog post that I wanted to share with you. And if you just Google... Uh, Michael Halcom Halloween. I think this will come up. The name of the original post was "Rethinking Halloween: A Christian Viewpoint." And this doesn't. Uh, this isn't very long, so I'm just going to read through some of it. I may skip parts, but uh, I still find that this holds pretty true all these years later, a decade and a half or whatever later. So the, the post kind of reads like this: It's not uncommon these days in North America to find some Christian somewhere who makes it their agenda to moderate and critique holidays. Currently, this can be illustrated by a simple perusing of GodTube. <laughs> that's funny because GodTube, I don't know if that's any longer around. Um, they used to be like the Christian version of YouTube, but uh, there used to be all these ridiculous debates on there uh, between believers. And so some thought it was okay to celebrate Halloween and others did not, and so they would argue about it. And of course, the people who thought that uh, Halloween was wrong, they would label the other people unchristian and satanic and worldly and secular, etc. And uh, I say, I can't help but laugh on the one hand and be heartbroken on the other. Clearly, too many people 
who act as though they are holier than thou are overzealous and underinformed. Their logic isn't even clear most of the time. And we just saw that in that post. The logic just wasn't clear. So how does one who calls themselves a Christian counter people who act too pious? Well, the place to begin is to rethink Halloween. In fact, it might not even be rethinking as much as thinking in the first place. For example, it's helpful to know that Halloween doesn't have its origins in a secular holiday. No, it can be traced back to Christian roots. It was a Christian holiday celebrated by the Celts. And for example, All Saints or Souls Day or Hallow's Eve, even though the Celts were considered by many to be barbaric. Even more than that, and perhaps more importantly, it goes back to the end of summer Celtic celebration called Samhain, some would say Samhain, which was an agricultural festival. This was the time when people would soak up the light and prepare for the dark, long winter months. It was a time to celebrate agricultural fruits and goods before the harsh winter came and killed everything. So actually, it was more about life <laughs> than death. In some ways, it was more about light than darkness, right? Yeah, so the overzealous evangelists who argue that this is a satanic ritual, a celebration of death, etc., think they just need to chill out a bit. Um, because I sense that many Christians have a problem with all this ghoulish attire on the one hand and the supposed celebration of death on the other. And so as for the ghoulish attire, we may recall that in earlier centuries, the church actually used ghouls and whatnot to ward off evil spirits. Uh, if you go look at a bunch of these old ancient churches, um, many of the buildings have gargoyles on them, what we would call ghouls, right? And so as for the celebration of death, I think too many people have overplayed this whole idea. I mean, those of us who have lost loved ones, right, there are certain times of year and certain things we do to commemorate their their lives, their death, their memories. We think of them, we look at pictures, we share stories, go to graveyards, and none of this is considered evil or satanic or unchristian. On a similar note, um, some suggest that by celebrating death, we are nullifying the resurrection. This is simply not true. Right as I mentioned before, Christians commemorate Christ's death and resurrection in communion. Christ himself commanded us to do this. And second of all, to remember the deceased is clearly not the same thing as worshiping them or celebrating death itself. And it's this point that I feel many are missing. And in missing the point, one Christian accuses another and everything just becomes ridiculous or evil or nasty. And so in the 19th century, when Halloween migrated to North America from Europe, it was not a devilish holiday still. That's in the 19th century. For example, this whole custom um, of jack-o'-lanterns, right? a pumpkin with a candle inside, that was actually meant to resemble the soul of a lost one who might be waiting in purgatory. It was meant as a reminder to pray for that person or simply to remember them. But it was also meant to be a symbol of celebration, of celebrating that person's life on earth. And so people, right, they would be merry or jolly, whatever. They would walk through the streets singing, sometimes even with bands. You can look up this history, by the way. I'm not making this up. And oftentimes this turned into a type of parade. And so the custom existed that if you have a jack-o'-lantern on your porch, it was not just a memorabilia thing. It was a message, too. A message to others that your loved one might need prayer or that you might need help appeasing God with gifts for that person's soul. And so people began leaving gifts, nickels, dimes, quarters, etc., next to the pumpkins. And as time progressed, people, usually youths, began stealing those coins, the monies. And it kind of, kind of became like this societal expectation, like a societal game after so many years, after a while. Right, And these kids would run up to the, the jack-o'-lanterns and they'd grab the monies that were left there and they'd run to the stores and they'd buy treats and candies. And so it's not too big of a stretch, right? Uh, not too big of a step from this thieving to marauding and causing trouble. And eventually that's exactly what began to happen. So today, 
uh, that's what much of Halloween has come to stand for and symbolize for some people, pranks and danger and stealing, causing trouble, marauding, etc. And if there's anything to be against as a Christian when it comes to Halloween, I think those are things we can be against. But in a world where uh, holidays have become increasingly domesticated, I mean, look at Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter, it seems as though Halloween uh, is the one night, the one holiday where youths can go out and act crazy and try to subvert holiday norms. And I think, you know, that too should maybe give us pause, um, not only for negative reasons, but positive ones too, right? Maybe we should stop watering down and domesticating all of our meaningful Christian holidays. So in the end, I, you know, there's no good reason for Christians to call each other names or to accuse people of being satanic or whatever. and just as well, there's no reason that Christian children shouldn't be able to go out for candy and dress up and have fun. There's nothing evil about that whatsoever. And I'd also say that our kids <laughs> don't have to be evangelistic, you know, and dress up as Bible characters. I know Christian schools do that a lot of times. Um, but maybe we should ask, is there even one character other than Jesus Christ in, in the scripture who's really worth emulating or dressing up as? But uh, one last thought, um, perhaps this holiday, which is so often associated with darkness and evil, brings out the darkness and evil that resides in the hearts of many who call themselves believers. Yeah, the name calling, the slandering, the hatred, and so on. That's all evil. But it's all illogical, too. Uh, and so in my view, Halloween can be a profitable holiday, if for nothing else, than to subvert those types of attitudes. And uh, it's a subversion that's done oftentimes with a lot of tasty candy. So I don't think there's any problem with celebrating Halloween as Christians. And I think people just need to chill out a little bit, learn some history, um, and have a little bit better logic. So I'm going to stop there. And I'll say at this point, I hope that helped. Interested in growing your ancient language skills, but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glow's House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glowsahouse.com today. Glow's House, language resources for the global community.